Hello and welcome to KISS in Adelaide. For the next hour, we're going to be looking at the American rock and roll phenomenon that is KISS, and you better believe they're no ordinary band. KISS, a four-man shock rock band whose concerts have been likened to a world war, who pull the strings on a multi-million dollar merchandising empire, and yet who command such fanatical loyalty from their fans, the KISS army, that kids have waited out all week just to get kissed. KISS was formed in 1972, but it was no accident, no chance meeting of four guys who just wanted to rock and roll. It was the carefully thought out brainchild of founder members Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley. They put the band together and rehearsed it till it ran like a Swiss watch. All four members of KISS share a common New York street background and they've taken that tough edge and translated it into their music and into their financial dealings. KISS are a costumed fantasy, everyone different. Gene Simmons, the bass guitarist, is the evil monster. During the course of a show, he breathes fire, belches blood, and flashes a seven-inch tongue like a switchblade. He's largely responsible for claims that Kiss are satanic. Paul Stanley, the rhythm guitarist, whose black star makeup is his trademark, is the rock and roll lover, and on stage he's a strider and a strutter, part vamp, but all star. Ace Freely is the band's spaceman and the lead guitarist. He's a little more reserved on stage than the others. He says the space image is an extension of his shy self. And the new member's Eric Carr. He's the fox, a design, they tell us, that took more than 60 hours to work out. He replaced original drummer Peter Chris, whose cat makeup was perhaps deliberately very similar. Tony, what's the build-up been like uh, as far as record sales go to this tour? Well, they've always been pretty good, but uh, I'd say going back to the release of their latest album, the Unmasked album, uh, it's been a steady build-up uh, and definitely picking up within the last couple of weeks. Well, Rob, from uh, Polygram's point of view, Unmasked has been an unbelievable success story. Well, that's right. We believe that um, the Unmasked album has sold as many in Australia per head population to any other country in the world. Which means they're just as big. They're just as big, if not even more. You know, we don't, we're not really 100% sure, but we feel possibly sold more in Australia than any other place per head population. So who's buying KISS and why? The uh, age group varies quite, uh, quite a bit, actually, uh, from, uh, I'd say, around about the six-year-old mark, uh, right up to the early 20s, uh, and even older than that. I think the, the kids have got to be part of something, you know. Uh, <coughs> my, my young daughter, she's not seven uh, yet, and, you know, she's talking KISS, and... All the, uh, the kids at school are taught and kiss, they wear their badges to school and I think that, you know, youngsters have got to be part of something. And I'm sure, you know, that uh, does uh, account for a, a large number of their following. Well, there are the two perspectives on it. You sell the records over the counter, now you're a dad who's youngsters getting caught up in kiss hysteria. How do you feel? Oh, well, I, uh, you know, it's... Uh, <coughs> how can I answer that one? That's... Uh, <laughs> uh, that's what every kid needs a hero, I suppose. Yeah, I, I guess so. I, I don't feel bad about it. I, I don't think she's gone to the extreme. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with it, really. Provided it's all controlled. That's from a parent, parent's point of view. I feel that Adelaide is a, is a very pro-kiss area. You had um, a phenomenally successful march here. Oh, that's right. I mean, it was uh, June the 16th of this year we launched the Unmasked album. Uh, we did a a promotion on the radio station, of which we called it a, a KISS countdown. It was 14 days to the march, 13, 12, 11, 10, so forth and so forth. And on that morning, uh, we had a, I think it was some 14, 1500 kids attended the march from Victoria Square down to downtown, and every one of them was um, dressed up in the KISS makeup, so it's a which cult. I mean, you know, that, that speaks sure. for itself. I mean, that, those kids felt so strongly about it. It was freezing cold that morning. It was a weekend too, wasn't You know, it, it was they freezing they cold. Showed their keenness, I think. Well, well, that's yeah, the sort yeah, of cult following that they engendered. Which one, I mean... And they really wanted to be a part of it. In fact, as the morning progressed, we had more and more people rolling up with makeup, but we had to turn them away because downtown just couldn't just couldn't hold that many kids it was so you know it was just so great the effect the results so what's the appeal of kiss do you think uh, I, I think basically the appeal of kiss stems uh, from their their stage act the film clips live on stage uh, they're very much a visual band yeah they're, they're very exciting um, you know one just has to look at a film clip and I think irrespective of your age you all of a sudden this kiss hysteria hits you 
from only two sources, from their concerts and from record sales. But KISS are into merchandising and they're into it in a big way. They know the name KISS sells. My KISS hat, for example. In fact, they merchandise everything from pet litter to pinball machines, from jigsaws to jewellery. Last year they netted an incredible $50 million. There are individual, poseable KISS dolls. If you're musically inclined, there are KISS guitars. You can even make your face up like KISS. A mask and a t-shirt, and you can even look like your idols. A plush boardroom high atop New York's prestigious Madison Avenue is about the last place you'd expect to find most rock and rollers. But KISS are in control of their financial empire. And it's from a boardroom like this that they meet once a month to control their $130 million interests. And when they're not taking care of business here, they're really taking care of business on stage. And still more KISS paraphernalia. Here at Johnny's Miss JM, you can actually watch live clips of the band while you buy your t-shirt. And something that's not available in Australia, but it's absolutely unprecedented for a rock and roll band, a KISS comic. It's the full Star Trek, a Marvel superhero comic featuring you-know-who right alongside such legendary figures as Spider-Man. National campaign involving KISS. How did it get started? Well, the uh, idea originated in my own household, actually. Uh, my 10-year-old son set the idea alight. Light. He's a KISS fan, and uh, you can't move in his room for posters, masks, etc. So when he uh, suggested that we should start getting excited about KISS coming to Australia, I took up his idea. And having started it in the news, um, it picked up momentum and snowballed into something of great uh, readership interest. What sort of reaction do you get? Uh, mostly we've uh, had a lot of good reaction. Of course, uh, there, has been, there have been some critics, but... Uh, there's the, been a good deal of criticism generally of the promotion of the band. How, how do you wear that? Well, I, I just think that uh, so the adults that criticise us should grow up and let the children enjoy themselves because uh, you know, t a 10-year-old child knows what he likes and what he dislikes. And uh, I think uh, that KISS gives children a living fantasy to believe in, uh, unlike Father Christmas and uh, the Easter Bunny. Is it just good business for the news or is it more than that? Well, it's good circulation-wise. I mean, uh, we're, not, we're not disappointed with that, but it all, we're also happy that it's uh, proved tremendously popular with the family readers and the paper's going more into, or is going more into more and more homes than it never has been in before. Has anyone in the paper, or yourself, or can you put your finger on the appeal, the, the very wide appeal that KISS seems to have? It's a fantasy. John, what's your job on the KISS tour? Well, I'm the official caterer for the Adelaide Oval, which means that I'm catering for KISS, but I have done uh, two or three shows before this. Uh, David Bowie, Linda Ronstadt, etc. Fleetwood Mac. What sort of things have KISS asked for, though? Well, funnily enough, uh, not anything near uh, the sort of request that we had from Ronstadt and Bowie. For example, Ronstadt uh, had a seven-course Mexican dinner for 100 people and ordered Queensland crab legs and Russian caviar and all sorts of uh, different drinks that were not available in South Australia. But actually the KISS group haven't uh, really demanded terribly much at all. Can you tell us a, a few things they have asked for? Well, they've asked for a special um, Japanese food, uh, seven or eight different varieties of Japanese food, um, plus uh, vegetable salads and tuna fish salads and so on, but nothing really out of the ordinary at all. Uh, I don't think they'll be able to eat what they have ordered, but uh, that's part of the course. A lot's been made of the fact that they demanded a silver service to, to eat on. That's not really true. No, it's not true at all. I just uh, ask that uh, we supply a neat, tidy, um, normal crockery and cutlery, as opposed to plastic knives and forks. This is just one of the trinkets of stardom. It's a, the $25,000 supercar that KISS will be using in Adelaide. Des, how uh, and what have you done to this car? It's been completely extended, about approximately four feet. Uh, centre seat added to it. 
uh, many extras put into it, twin tail shaft and new hood, hood lining. Um, well, it's in numerous, the things you've got to put into a thing like this once you start on it. Yeah. Let's have a look inside. Now it's fully air conditioned. Yes, yeah, fully air conditioned, ducted through to the back rear area. Uh, this is a must with any VIP work. unmercifully since their inception but kids like Donna and Troy adore them the world over. In fact in Australia alone there are 12,000 members of their fan club, the KISS Army. They age roughly from 6 to 16 although there is a member of the KISS Army who's 60 years of age and part of the mystique, part of the aura surrounding KISS is putting on the makeup. Donna, why did you get interested in Kiss? Well, um, my dad, he brought in a record and he told to me to play it and I played it and it was really good. He actually... And then he I actually... liked it. So your dad is a Kiss fan? Well, not really, but he just brought it to see what it was like. And you liked them from then on? Mm-hmm. Why do you like them so much? Well, um, they've got good music and it's good how they've um, got their makeup on. Do you like to make yourself up like that? Yeah. Um, you've had a bit of an influence on the younger brother, I believe. Yeah. Well, when he says that I'm, I've got him into kiss, but I didn't really, I said, let's listen to a record. He said, gee, I like that. Would you like to remember a kiss too? Mm-hmm. What does your dad think now that you want to buy all of the things associated with kiss? Um, sometimes he gets mad. Sometimes he says it's a good value, so he'll let me buy it. And have you and your friends played around with makeup before? Yeah. Who would you like to be? I'd like to be, um, really Gene Simmons of the long tongue. <laughs> Why the long tongue? I don't know, really. Sometimes it's... What, what do you like about them? The makeup. 
Do you like putting it on yourself? Yeah. Would you like to be a member of KISS? Yeah. Why? Because they're good and they like their concerts and their makeup. Mm. I understand you've got a bit of a running battle with your mum about buying all of the KISS gear. Yeah. Does she get mad about it? Sometimes. Is it the money or does, doesn't she like Kiss? I think it's, it's the money. Do you play the records now? Yeah, pretty much. What is it about them? More, it must be something a bit more than I mean, there are lots of bands who appear on television. Why Kiss? Well, I like their songs. I like to play some the drums someday. Mm. How's your makeup going? Good. I miss the Peter Chris, but he's with the band now. You seem to know all about the band. an obsession about not seeing KISS members with their distinctive makeup, but our Melbourne cameraman very nearly managed what the world's photographers have only dreamed about. Was that Gene Simmons enjoying a casual cup of coffee, caught fresh-faced and just a little curious? It certainly was. The distinctive tongue gives him away, and that little wave is the only look the fans got for their long wait. Drummer Peter Chris has now left the band, of course. This is one of the first photos published of the cat, unmasked. Chris is pursuing a solo career, but he remains a part of the KISS phenomenon. show like KISS. It's got to be the biggest thing that uh, Adelaide, probably Australia, has seen. How do you go about organising a show the size of the KISS concert? We're probably lucky in that we've been there before to a certain extent. I mean, you're right, it is the biggest show. So, and logistically, it's the biggest uh, rock and roll show that we've put on in Australia. But it's been a build-up over the years. You know, there have been times when other shows could well be said to be the biggest thing that happened to Australia. And uh, uh, when I call to mind immediately the show ABBA, when the first time we put ABBA on, which was not in this ground, it was in the, sh the uh, football park, uh, there were a lot of there was a lot of untested ground, new ground that had to be broken as far as uh, you know uh, building of stages and, and sound requirements and, and electricity and so on. And so Kiss is an extension of what's already gone before. So from that angle, we're reasonably lucky. So. There's a mountain of gear though here, and mm -hmm. 85 tonnes in all. Yes. Why is all that necessary, and what's happening right now to, to make the Kiss concert? Well, so at the present minute, it's, a, it's just purely getting the stage ready, getting all the backstage area uh, together there. The, the bands that are, and that are used to the sort of style of living that KISS and the big, the, the big superstars are used to, they demand certain things backstage, and that's understandable. I think if I... Can you talk nine, about those demands? Yeah, yes, I think if I, had, if I was part of an organisation which earned 19 billion a year, and uh, well, then I'd want to be able to go wherever I was and open up in a fridge and get the sort of food and drink that I'm used to having. They've made some and pretty outrageous demands, though. Can you tell us about those? Outrageous? Uh, I don't know about the word outrageous. They've made well, having a limo at yeah. 19 degrees Celsius, yeah. to, yes. to most of us, seems a, an extravagance. Yes, but uh, see, they've probably been to places where uh, the, uh, they've, made, they've had requirements and those requirements haven't been met by the, the local management. So as uh, I used as an example at another time just recently that uh, uh, we were asked to supply hors d'oeuvres for a, for a well-known group and, uh, and they said on the bottom of the rider this must not be fish and chips. And we went to a reputable hotel and we asked them to, to you know, cater for it and you can, you can guess what happened. Out came little pieces of fish and chips. 
and of course the, the band didn't want it, they just didn't want that at all. So next time I'm sure when they do their rider they're going to say this is what it has to be. So that's what we, what we end up with here. We end up with a rider which says it has to have this sort of uh, temperature control in the limousines and it has to have uh, newspapers that are up to date and so on. But uh, What are some of the more unique things that KISS have asked for? Well, they've asked for four mobile homes. They each like one themselves. They uh, have asked for space invaders and those sort of machines which have to be uh, near their tent. Uh, they want outdoor garden settings. Uh, they want the very best of wines and food on tap and at the right temperature. Their security requirements are quite stringent, mainly, I think, because of a paranoia, not because of any problems uh, that they've experienced. And uh, we've got uh, security sort of where we'd normally have two or three security uh, men patrolling a particular area. We've probably got 10 or 12. They've asked for a garden as well. Yes. What's that all about? Well, just uh, the, the way we arrange their, their uh, mobile homes in a sort of a quadrangle of them, uh, form so that they have a certain amount of privacy. And we're just sort of setting that up as a garden so that it's uh, pleasant and uh, shade and uh, just a, a nice sort of uh, uh, surrounding for them to relax in. And that's becoming run of the mill for a, a top level band can demand these sort of oh, things. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And they can demand uh, what would it add to the waiter service and so on. What would it add to the price of a ticket or to the cost of the, the promotion? Well, mainly to the to the cost of promotion. I mean, the uh, uh, the uh, always, of course, there's an increase in the, the ticket price going up, but uh, it's, it's fairly well in line with normal sort of cost of living adjustment. Uh, but uh, uh, those prices in the total overall cost of putting a mounting a show like this, like bringing their equipment out from the states and the, and air, the uh, freight charges and so on, those costs are fairly minimal really. So, you know, you can set up a really nice backstage area. I mean, we, we have to have caravans before. A mobile home might be only an extra $50 each and, uh, and the garden setting is, you know, sort of a couple of hundred dollars and a few tickets here and tickets there sort of arrange these things anyhow. So it, it doesn't really significantly increase the cost. Everybody's going to come to see. For those people who haven't seen them, mm. what can we expect? I think we can expect probably the most spectacular performance of any sort of entertainment area that uh, we've witnessed in Adelaide. It's been uh, compared to World War III. <laughs> uh, well, I've not seen it, but I've only seen, uh, well, I've seen rough drafts, I've seen the program, I've seen a material that's come through which has given us to an appreciation of what we require to do here. And I think it will, as I said, the, the uh, staging, the, uh, the stage, the actual stages, the... the uh, paraphernalia that is used to fly the, the performers or to bring them up on these various hydraulic lifts and so on. It will just be a very full, exciting, larger than life. The whole thing about Kiss is larger than life. Even their costuming sort of makes them sit really tall and so on. And that's what we'll see on stage. Can we talk to Kiss? Is anybody from the media, anybody from the media allowed in at all? Well, that's as far as we got. The gentleman's just said his instructions are no one. That's as far as we got, that's as far as the fans have got. Hope you enjoyed the program. Hope it's a good concert.